Greetings, this is Comrade Net, Cleric of Public Relations for the Boondist Movement. Uh, first of all, let me say I wish everyone a wonderful Purim. Um, and I'm taking this opportunity to speak about something concerning, um, uh, um, um, something concerning uh, Purim. In the Book of Esther, um, because the king could not reverse his edict, and his edict was that the Jewish people were all to be annihilated because Lord Haman had tricked the king into signing such an edict, um, he then ruled that if the Jewish people were attacked, they should defend themselves. This brings some things to mind, one of them being that the Islamic Republic of Iran um, continues in the ancient Persian tradition of hosp ho hospitality for the Jewish people. Although if you check out Western media, you, you will be convinced of quite literally the opposite of this fact. And that dives into the next thing. Um, so this is a video recently put out by, by Abraham Weisfeld, PhD, the chairman of the revolution for the Buddhist movement. Um, Dr. Abraham Weisfeld has resurrected the Bund in one of the ways that, uh, well, one of the, I mean, one of the things that should be understood is the current Bund is the Jewish Socialist Bund, not the Jewish Labor Bund. The Jewish Labor Bund is pretty much defunct. Um, it had its time. It did a lot of good. Although after World War II, it started to go very, very stagnant more and more and more. Um... But the Jewish Socialist Bund, while it has not done nearly as much as the old Jewish Labor Bund had been doing, I argue that it's a lot more advanced. But uh, this next video um, is a presentation recently put out by Dr. Weisfeld on um, the matters of self-defense. It's also uh, striking because this is um, a lesson he had tried to teach me a couple times. Eventually it took, but it's... The, the ba basic, basic way I can summarize it is um, liberation by any means necessary does not necessarily mean liberation by all means necessary. And he puts out the points, the, uh, the, the, the principal Bundism points uh, on proper self-defense. Please do enjoy. And uh, after this, I'll give, I'll, give, um, I'll give a little bit, you know, of some afterthought. Well, this is uh, Dr. Abraham Weisfeld here speaking uh, to uh, really test that on the microphone here. But I was thinking that I might as well, you know, register an argumentation, a deductive uh, argumentation here, which uh, takes a moment to uh, record, which is very pertinent to the current conditions of the uh, genocide in Gaza because the defense of the Palestinians is uh, made with arguments that are at times faulty and have no effect and therefore waste uh, the energy that's put into them because of a of a contradiction which is not apparent there's a couple of such cases one is the ambiguity of uh, from a river to the sea and uh which in itself is an endorsement of a one-state solution, which uh, is uh, basically the conception in, encouraged by uh, a current of thought which emanates from a, uh, a um, an obsolete political current, you know, uh, of a populist and a ex-communist party a cadres who uh, argue for a uh, lib liberal um, notion of the nation of of the state you know which is a pluralist and which doesn't exist anymore anywhere in the world actually and which existed in europe for a while you know when there was a, a, a certain um, birth of uh, of nation states there in 1648 however this is not 1648 
and uh, you know, uh, and they, you know, a one-state solution is not a solution. Okay, two-state solution is not a solution either. But the recognition of Palestine in the face of Israel and various fora is now the uh, fault that I wish to address is the one that uh, makes reference uh, to armed struggle. There is a provision in international law for the right of national self-determination, which includes the uh, uh, the right of resistance, uh, both peacefully and with armed resistance. Armed resistance is not defined thereafter. It's just the two words that are mentioned in this international law. The uh, task at hand is to define what is armed resistance. The first uh, notion of armed resistance that I know of is that uh, of the Jewish Bund, because my mother's um, involvement with the uh, Jewish resistance against the Nazi occupation, particularly in Russia and previously in Poland in the Warsaw Ghetto. So this um, code of uh, military conduct by the Jewish Bund, which uh, included my uh, mother's brother, who was a partisan, was that the, it is legitimate, considered leg legitimate, <clears throat> both in uh, in what should be international law or, or military code of a reciprocal nation, um, <clears throat> and also in, in Judaic law, is that uh, the officers of an uh, invading army are the first target to be uh, taken out. Next is the soldiers who are engaged in uh, offensive uh, operations and killing people. And uh, three, informers who, informers who kill people as well by denouncing them. Or gain. Yes. Because um, prosperity is the purpose of life. Okay, so the argument of armed struggle is faulty because it is uh, not reciprocal and it is not um, un and is not limited. Uh, first of all, any national liberation struggle could claim such a right, irrespective of what it is doing at the moment, right? So, if a given group, given people, a given nation are an oppressed nation and conduct a, a resistance movement for the uh, national liberation of its people are justified to use armed struggle, yes or no? Okay, if you say yes, then in principle, you know, we're discussing this, you know, not in terms of limitations or not, but in principle, we have to consider um, that uh, this is a, a right of uh, armed struggle which can be conducted against anybody <laughs> you know like it's not specified you know against whom it can be conducted you know so you know uh, the, the zionists took this you know ball and ran with it you know and claimed to, to be a national liberation movement which uh, is doubtful uh, but the, the uh, national liberation of the Jewish people was necessary, and they claimed, you know, to be representative of the national liberation of the Jewish people who had just, or uh, were undergoing a Holocaust by the Nazis for no good reason. So, um, you know, the armed struggle then, you know, was conducted by the Zionists, not against, you know, the Nazis. <laughs> no, the partisans were, Pluto, you know, mostly, you know, the Bundes, and uh, the Zionists who had no other choice, you know, but to resort to direct action in self in self defense. But it was not a Zionist strategy. Zionist strategy was to run away and hide and take over somebody else's country because they had a right to national self determination. That is the Jewish people, and the Zionists claimed to be representative of the Jewish people, so they claimed this right of the Jewish people in their own name and claimed it to be the leadership and the vanguard of the Jewish people in doing so. You know, in the face of, you know, the assimilationist Jewish population, which went and joined, you know, whatever, you know, Communist Party, Trotsky's parties, or whatever, you know, 
and gave up their identity. So the Zionists claim to re be a representative of the Jewish people after the Holocaust because the Jewish Bund, which were the vanguard and the anti-fascist resistance of the Jewish people, didn't exist any longer, except for some survivors like my mother and me. So the Zionists claimed, you know, the representative of the Jewish people, national rights to self determination and all that, you know, verbiage, and the, the right to armed struggle. Against whom? Against the Palestinians. Oh. Why? Because the Palestinians were in the way of the national liberation of the Jewish people, who were claiming a sovereign right, you know, to to control the uh, land of uh, what was previously known as Israel, even though uh, the state is not considered to be Israel in Judaism, because Israel is considered to be the name of the Jewish people as a whole, and not a state, and not a territory. Okay? In Hebrew, this is Hamadina Tvelo Israel. Okay? The state is not Israel. And when they say Israel, Am Yisrael Chai, they don't know what they're talking about, you know, like because that means the long live the Jewish people. It doesn't mean the state, because the state didn't exist all the time, it only existed, you know, like for 70, 80 years previously and 75 years this time. So, you know, like Jewish people existed throughout, you know, all the time, you know. So, you know, Israel must be referring to the Jewish people, you know. It's a matter of definition. So, you know, the Zionists, you know, took over this, you know, right in the armed struggle now that you know, they're using against Palestinians. When the Palestinians resist, oh, well, they're only resistance because because they're Nazis, you know, and therefore they, uh, it is required to obliterate them. Because, you know, the right of armed self-determination is not, is not limited. It's not defined, you know, with any sort of, you know, limitation. Now, when Malcolm X referred to, you know, the right of armed struggle, he uh, used the phrase, by all means necessary. But he also stated, by all means necessary, but not necessarily by all means. It depends on the context and the need. Now, the need, you know, for genocide of the Palestinians in Gaza is not apparent. What happened on October the 7th was not a genocidal campaign, but yet the uh, horror stories that are propagated and still are propagated of various uh, crimes against humanity that are genocidal or uh, as such in nature are uh, uh, generally not true, according to the even most current uh, study conducted by Al Jazeera in the documentary called October the 7th. So the horror stories, you know, th the uh, uh, campaign of mass rapes is not verified by any agency, certainly not the Israel police. The uh, initial story of 40 beheaded um, babies and burnt uh, is not true either. You know, there are various body parts left over that were burned under tank fire that may have been the size of babies, but they weren't babies. That was delusion, delusionary. Uh, the documentary, though, does a, account, you know, and use the um, the body cam, you know, footage of various Hamas fighters showing that there was a brutal campaign of killing of civilians, especially at the Nova Festival, which they tumbled upon. And with all of the uh, fleeing Israelis, you know, who came there in, in such a naive fashion, even though they're the soldier, soldier's age, um, they come there with a, without even their arms. Then even then, you know, when the border police, you know, showed up, you know, 57 or 53, depending on the account, ended up being uh, killed because they were overwhelmed. The number of uh, Palestinian uh, fighters that invaded was 1,200. And all along the border, you know, they eliminated, you know, the entire military court cauldron, took, you know, a lot of, you know, military hostages that weren't resisting. Uh, fighting back and so they became hostages they were they were captured before they could fight back or whatever you know including the generals and including the, the uh, general you know of the whole uh gaza brigade are hostage uh and right now up to now you know they still are you know so if they haven't been bombed so the limitations you know like uh 
by all means necessary, but not necessarily by all means. You know, so how do you determine this dichotomy? How do you determine this, this dialectic? Well, that's to be discussed, isn't it? And as I mentioned, you know, there is the Jewish Bundes Code of military engagement, which is officers, soldiers, and uh, deadly informers. And that's it. No civilians allowed. Okay. Waiting to do the next here and now session today with Steve Struggle. This is Dr. Abraham Weisfeld here saying bye. Shortly after uh, this video you just saw, uh, there was another video put out by Dr. Abraham Weisfeld and Steve Struggle, who had been part of the original Black Panther Party. Um, I would like to say that um, there's a link in the description below which brings, uh, which will bring everybody to the previous video on this channel. It goes off for the complicated nuances concerning uh, the differences between somebody who's Jewish and somebody who's not really Jewish necessarily, but have who has Jewishness. And <clears throat> I do hope that within the van, because we're, we're having these meetings within the Vanguard Circle, the current Vanguard Circle, like I said in the previous video, is what I would call more of an organic Vanguard Circle. Um, so it's not going to be necessarily so rigid as the program which me and Donna Newman had come up with in the past. Uh, however, I came up with variations of the Vanguard Circle, and um, that is because I had concluded that there are different ways to do a Vanguard Circle. The current Vanguard Circle is working out fine, so, you know, while I do think that all understandings of the Vanguard Circle should be promoted, in fact, that's one of the, one of the videos that I'm working on currently, um, while there should be, you know, while well, it should be known how it was done before and the various ways that, you know, it could possibly be done. Um, the fact that there's variations meaning that there is no one way to do it. And the way that we're doing it currently is fine. Um, this is a... Uh, so, in the link in the description below is the previous video from this channel. Um, and I put it below in the description here because... In case somebody's picking up this video on this feed, it would be necessary, you know, you know, you may not necessarily, unless you go straight to the channel, find the video. So this way you can just go straight to the video after watching this video if you have not seen it. Um, but somebody that belongs in the Vanguard Circle with us is Abraham Schultz. Um, another person that belongs in the Vanguard Circle is Eric Grotsky. I think that that's his name. Um, Eric Grotsky is a Muslim with Jewishness. See, he's a Muslim who considers himself Jewish due to some uh, background with his father. I never really got a chance to talk to this person. Um, it was really just through, you know, um, Dr. Weisfeld that I had any communication. But Eric should um, be in the Vanguard Circle with us. As he... Uh, you know, and that is because... If a Muslim is going to say that he's Jewish, this is actually a sign of Jewishness with the Muslim. Therefore, because the boon particularly does deal with Jewishness, he should be involved. Eric should be in the Bundist, uh, you know, he should be in the Bundist vanguard circle. Because, as the video, which is linked in the description below, expresses, those who, those, those Gentiles with Jewishness should be in the boond. Unfortunately, the rabbis, while they while while they do focus on Judaism, which for Jewish people, any Jewish individuals, that is going to be a lot more essential than Jewishness. Jewishness still exists for Jewish people, and Jewishness rubs off on non-Jewish people, typically because of some kind of relation you have to the Jewish nation. Um, this applies to Mark Foster. This applies to quite a few Muslims with Jewishness. It also applies to certain uh, uh, Christians with Jewishness. However, when it comes to the Christians, 
we are much more selective on who would be put into the boond. That's another reason why the video below is um, necessary to watch, because Dr. Weisfeld had actually identified which, uh, which Christians could be part of this and which ones couldn't be. And uh, everyone he identifies, including the, the Assyrians and the Armenians, could easily um, fall into this category. So please be able to please please check out the just the, the description and um click on the link below after watching this video if you have not watched the previous video anyway i'm now going to just let this go to the next video uh by dr abram weisfeld where he um it's the latest here now episode uh which uh, has Steve struggle from the ba from the original Black Panther Party? Happy Purim, everyone! Free Palestine. This is here and now, and uh, here we go. Where are we going to? Is this uh, another war on top of a war on top of a war, or what? What is going on? Going on, oh, that's for sure. That's for sure. I haven't heard much about what's happening in Moscow. Do you do you hear you know what's uh, what this well, uh, yeah, attack on I, Moscow is all about? Yes, I can give you a pretty updated view. I've been listening to it most of the night. Yesterday afternoon, I, I'm recording on Saturday, the uh, 23rd of March. So yesterday, the 22nd of March, in the evening, there was a concert in Kras Krasnogorsk, which is in the Russian suburb um, near Moscow. Hmm. Uh, four, four terrorists uh, entered. Entered the building, and just turned people down like dogs. It was that's how, just like, just very similar to how how Al, Al, Al Shabab went to the Westfield Shopping Center in in uh, in um, uh, Nairobi. Just walked in and started killing people. There's wow. videos of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just kind of like, hey, let's let's kill somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, so uh, and they obviously were very prepared to even burn the building down. Because they had some um, in, some incendiary devices, and they yeah. actually they actually caught the building on fire. So this this is like a uh, an event center where people have parties and concerts, and it was a concert planned, and um, so they knew people were going to be there. Mm -hmm. um, so four four people participated in um, in uh, in the mass murder. Um, they they actually escaped by yeah. car. And we're on their way to Ukraine, and oh, they were. Oh, that's a good indication of where they came from. And 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 they were caught um, in in the um, mission area near the border. Four four have been detained, and eleven in total. To me, and, and eleven others have been have been detained. Um, currently, the death toll is about one hundred and twenty dead. Um, Hundreds more wounded. Uh, a lot of things are going on in that area right now, as far as support, um, cab rides, um, security has a little bit has been taken up a little bit. Uh, uh, so that's what I know. The one, one person was interrogated, and the video was shown on uh, Ria Ria No Novosti, and he claimed, you know, true or true or not, that he was he came in from Turkey. And was paid five thousand dollars. This is what this one person has said. Who knows if that's true or not? That's all I can tell you. But it, it was a definitely um, a terrorist attack. Um, I expected these attacks to have occurred because we had the daughter of um, of um, Dujan murdered in Moscow. Her car, her car oh, was. Yes. Up. You had the uh, the blogger, military blogger, during a book reading in Saint Petersburg. The event was blown up. Um, you have the head of the secret police in uh, Ukraine, and plus there was an article a few weeks ago in in the LA, in the New York Times talking about how the CIA has been working secretly in Ukraine for decades to mm -hmm. to wage war against Russia. Uh, so clearly, you know this whoever carried out the event knew the lay of the land well enough to mm -hmm. come in, carry it out, and and, and escape. Um, they did get. They have been detained. Uh, many people have been murdered. They're dead. 
they injured her there. And it was a very tragic event, but I have no knowledge of this. The U.S. two weeks ago gave a warning to Americans to avoid certain situations. Mm -hmm. So clearly the Americans and the British knew something, knew about it or knew what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, but I have expected this mm -hmm. because the Ukrainians don't have any way of winning militarily. Mm -hmm. So they have to resort to terrorism. Mm -hmm. So whether or not the Ukrainian government itself was the organizer of it, they were trying to escape to Ukraine. And more than likely had a way to get in. If, if they didn't have a way to get in, they would be going, going, you know, going, you know, going for the border. So that was their escape route. And we'll just see how things proceed from here. You know, that's all I can say right now. Hmm. This reminds me of the reports that I heard previously about the uh, chemical and biological warfare labs that were set up by the CIA on Ukrainian territory because it was illegal on the on American territory. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, so uh, that might be happening as well. Wow. Yes, I think this campaign, the Russian uh, military special military operation to for the denazification of the Ukraine is in order. I don't think they should go over the Dnieper River, but uh, I think that uh, where they can uh, find the sites. Uh, military sites within Ukraine property proper, then uh, they should go after that for sure. Even though, you know, on the ground, you know, the, the Donbass region doesn't go beyond the uh, Danube river there, you know, so that's, that's sufficient. And they don't have a, they don't have a mandate, you know, to go any further than that either. But the recent elections that took place, you know, through Putin, he got, you know, quite a, quite a mandate, you know, in those elections and, in both uh, Lugansk and um, Donetsk, he got a what uh, ninety-two and ninety-four percent of the vote. Yeah, yeah well, those, mm -hmm. those people want those people want those those people wanted to be out of Ukraine and part of Russia. So since they're in Russia now, they're going to vote very heavily in favor of of the current administration. That really is is to be expected. And I think it was a fair election because uh, for identification purposes. Uh, Ukrainian passports were were accepted, uh, in addition to Russian passports. So nice. uh, there was no discrimination as to uh, who a potential voter might be. So uh, wouldn't have it. Show, it sure would have been, Well, in the United States, you don't have to show passport to vote. But you know, um, but it's, it's very good to see that everyone had a chance to vote and participate. I personally, this is me politically. I'm not saying what people should or shouldn't do. But I'll be damned if I got to have an international observer in my country looking at elections when nobody comes to the United States to look at elections. But yeah. that's just me. That's me talking about how I see it. Everybody got their own way of dealing with stuff. But I, yeah. I don't think it's right that you got to have it look. You you have it, You choose to have it, somebody watching your vote, but can't nobody yeah. watch your vote. Hey 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 hey. Hey, I volunteer. Hey. I volunteer to be uh, an observer in the American election, oh, the next God. American presidential election. I'll come oh, and check it out. You know, for you, no yeah. problem. You, 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 they probably stop you at the border. You, you ain't getting here. Oh, yeah, they would detain me at the border are. for thirty days. I, I saw, well, I saw yeah. your picture. I saw your picture. Get out of here, buddy. Yeah. You know. <laughs> oh wow. So you know that's that's it. It's, it's been the, the news on the on the internet has been interesting. Um, and actually, to be very fair, if it wasn't for the internet, we wouldn't know anything about this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this, this is a story that clearly the internet has been the source of information. Not mm -hmm. the New York Times, not the yeah. Washington Post. No, the internet, be it on Telegram or just YouTube or, mm -hmm. or some other platform. Amazing. And now it's on here now. Here we are. <laughs> here we are. It's right. Here we are. On yeah. the internet, still getting the word out. So I hope everybody, please, will hit the, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and mm -hmm. share this video far and wide so we can have more people watching and and tuning in and participating in in this conversation. Yeah. Um, uh, today, uh, before we got started, I did a, a recording of my own just to test out the new microphone here, and uh, I I elaborated a whole sort of you know uh, uh, theorem basically of of what armed struggle is and uh, and how uh, one can uh, evaluate you know what the armed struggle by Hamas was like. Uh, according to the documentary put out by Al Jazeera on October the 7th. 
And uh, I did a, you know, a sort of a critique, critique of uh, Hamas for having taken down the uh, civilians at the Nova Rave Festival, but I uh, discounted the uh, horror stories and uh, and put forward the, the uh, Jewish Bundes uh, military uh, code to uh, uh, note that, uh, you know, basically what Hamas was doing was, you know, quite legal in terms of, uh, of armed struggle. Uh, 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 ethics and uh, international law, because uh, according to the, even the Jewish Bund in resistance against the Nazi occupation, like my uh, mother's brother, first you take down the officers who are given the orders, then you take down the soldiers who are carrying out the orders, and then you take down the informers who are who are killing people um, by denunciation. And that's it, you know, like the rest of the civilians, no matter what they think or, or whatever, you know, what relationship they have to any of the uh, military are not uh, considered to be military targets. So that's uh, why, you know, there is a difference uh, with the uh, practice of the Hamas fighters. But, you know, like what I saw in that documentary, you know, these Hamas fighters, they had no direction. There was no sort of, you know, like uh, uh, either a chain of command or a council, you know, no sort of, you know, sit down, you know, strategy talk, you know, nothing, you know, they're just sort of, you know, wandering around in the kibbutzim, you know, in the villages there, you know, wondering what to do next because they took down the military within one hour. <laughs> they got to the, uh, they got to the, uh, you know, the kibbutzim in, in the, uh, on the Palest the old Palestinian land of 1947. And, and uh, they got there, you know, like, and they could do, you know, like, what do they want? They didn't know what to do. Only, you know, to take hostages, yes. But they didn't have, you know, that many vehicles. So they had to confiscate the vehicles of the kibbutzim, you know, tractors and, and and wagons, you know, and start taking people, you know, back, you know, on these little sort of mini tractors, you know, going at five miles an hour or something like that. <laughs> Incredible, you know, like, and then, you know, uh, even after that, you know, trying to get back to Gaza, then all, you know, these civilians are flooding across the the fence, you know, into the, uh, in the kibbutzim, you know, to, to loot and to take hostages themselves. You know, civilians were taking, uh, you know, Israeli civilians hostage on their mini bikes, <laughs> you know, with three people on a mini bike, you know, trying to make it back, you know, to, to Gaza with a helicopter chasing them, you know, like shooting them down, you know, like insects together with the this hostages, is, of course, incredible scene, complete well, anarchy. Uh, where did you see this? Uh, Al Jazeera. They have this documentary now, an hour-long documentary that they got oh, some I, I, new I footage from. It. Oh, we it's incredible, see it. you know, to see the, see you know, because they took the body cam videos, you know, like I have a body cam at the oh. vigil tomorrow. They had thought of body cams too, you know, I don't know where they got them from, maybe China, you know, like I did. But, uh, you know, they had these, you know, good videos, you know, like high definition, you know, colored videos, you know, of what the Hamas fighters were doing, you know, by their own body cams, you know, because they lost the body cams after they were killed, of course. So that's how they got the body cams and they were made available to Al Jazeera. This is a must see then. This is a must see. This is must see. Yeah. We must see. The reason why I'm saying this is, first of all, I just want to commend you for doing the research, uh, Abraham, on on what the military code of conduct should be mm. because i think it's important because all of our movements at one time or another are going to have a military component whether mm. we whether we advocate it or not it's going to happen and what we advocate to other the others on how to conduct themselves exactly. in, a, in a principled fashion now, now Ma, uh mao Zedong had this in in the in the little red the little red book Three, uh, th the t t ten points of attention and and the three the three main points of discipline. So I know that growing up, when I read that book, that's the first time I had seen such a such such statement. So it's important to, hmm. you know, I mean, whether you have guides on what to do afterwards or not for the soldiers and and the and the leadership to know here's what we're going to do, here's what we're not going to do, hmm. and make. They make that just make that very clear. I mean, you know, if say for example they had to get cars, well, they had to get the cars from somebody. Mm -hmm. You could say, man, you couldn't just say, man, the may, may, may have the keys, please. <laughs> no, no, there's not going to be that. No, no. So you may have to use some force to get the keys. Okay, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say, be, be, be realistic, like the tractor. Here, here, the tractor. I doubt someone. Some people may hear me. They take the tractor get out of here. Oh, that's that's no problem. You know, that's not even an act of violence. Just just a matter of uh, 
confiscation there. Yeah. Right, 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 right. The way, the way, there may have to be some confiscation, and confiscation in those situations is best done by, you know, we need this. Yeah. Now you may have to use the means to get it, but hopefully you have to take nobody's life to get it. Yeah. You know, that, that's not the, you know, but uh, I really would like to see this video, and I hope you can. I, I don't know if we're, if you're going to share it in the in the chat or in the description below, but I definitely would like to get it from you or know where I can find it. Yeah. Okay, I'll go get the uh, the link and I'll put it in in all the places. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because it's very necessary to find you know what armed struggle is you know because the Zionists you know start off you know with the verbiage uh, being you know popular front you know with the national bourgeoisie you know the national liberation movement. And they claimed the right of self of armed struggle, okay? But they, you know, the way they, you know, like used armed struggle, first of all, they weren't, you know, like uh, into national liberation. They weren't into national suppression of the Palestinians. You know, they weren't fighting so much against the British as they were against the Palestinians. So it's of a course, total sort yes. of, you know, inversion of, you know, the claim that they're making. But it's nonetheless, you know, what they're doing now is they're taking out people for a thought crime. Because they think that they're Palestinians, and so they don't deserve to live, you know, because they can't tolerate anybody who thinks that they're a Palestinian. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, in Israel, you're not allowed to use the word Palestinian. You can only talk about the Arabs. You know, just talk about the Palestinians, right away, you're a traitor. <laughs> that's, you know, like about well, it. That, that, that just shows you that Israel is a country that if anybody is concerned with human rights, social justice, peace, intelligent discourse. Um, you really have to watch your step if you live there. Mm -hmm. Because if I can't have a discussion about a topic, then the revolution that people fought for, it wasn't worth it. Even though, even though you might not like the topic, I can have a discussion about the topic and we can say, okay, that's social taboo in our country. Okay, fine. But yeah, it, 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 I, I've heard that a lot from uh, the Zionist Israelis in Palestine, in Israel, in Palestine. Mm -hmm. Well, there are no Palestinians because there are no, there is no, there is no Palestine. Well, that means there aren't. That means that there are no African Americans because there, because there is no African America. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. That's 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 what you're saying. Yeah, and it also means there's no Jewish people because there wasn't a state before. <laughs> yeah. So the the whole thing that the the entire argument these folks make. It not only boggles the mind, it shows the warped philosophy and the civilization that they that they are that they are part of is very demented and chauvinistic and very, very militaristic. Yeah. They will simply wipe out, they'll wipe you out. They're, they're, yeah, they're Spartan, no very Spartan state-like mentality, you know, like upbringing, yeah, yeah. you know, in a militaristic framework. Very, All the educational good. system is yes. geared, you know, to militarism. Yes. And then they can't yeah. even go to university without going to the military first, you know, like it's... Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's very Spartan, that, that Spartan kind of, I, that Spartan kind of, it's, it's, um, I can see a society needing that at certain times. Um... But if you're or, or if if you're organized around that, how do you allow for the body politic to exist and to diversify its views so that that society can become stronger? Israel's having that problem now, I think. And I, I'm not the expert in Israel anyway. But what they're going through now, what they're doing now, is going to change the entire fabric of the, of their thinking towards mass murder, mm. towards. Uh, the oppression of Palestinians and non-Israeli people. Mm -hmm. It's rather sadistic the care acts they're carrying out. And when you have a society in which sadism and mass violence is accepted and is part of, because part of the DNA, mm -hmm. that's 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 a problem world. People like that can't fit in the world too well, I don't think. Mm -hmm. well, maybe I maybe I'm wrong about this. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Yeah. It's it's uh it's also can be sort of you know uh, considered in, in term in uh, terms of uh, mentality in terms of the, the psychological makeup you know of the of the of the body politic there you know because it's a common body politic and it's you know a mass mass mentality that they have which is delusional first of all the military are trained and taught and think that they are defending the jewish people that that's their purpose and they're defending the Jewish people by oppressing the Palestinian people. And they consider the Palestinians 
They're taught that the Palestinians are a genocidal people who are trying to wipe out the Jewish people. <laughs> and so therefore, uh, it's permissible to wipe them out in order to prevent the wiping out of the Jewish people, okay? Now, since their intention, stated intention, is to wipe out the Palestinian people, then by reciprocity, the Palestinians have the right to consider that they are obliged to wipe out the Jewish Israeli population before they get wiped out themselves. <laughs> so, you know, like they have created the conditions, you know, for their own, uh, you know, like elimination, you know, like because they adopted the uh, that kind of methodology, you know, the methodology itself, you know, is irrational, it's, you know, in and of itself, together with the delusions that they cultivate in order to justify the call for genocide of the Palestinians to begin with. So it's, yeah. you know, an incredibly yeah. crazy situation. And by, but see, by creating the ideology that the Palestinians are as alien people who are intent on destroying them, then the, then the Jewish state, the Israeli state, the Zionist state creates this, creates the conditions where they are, they are creating their own enemies by, by their own ideology. Yes, and, and according to their That's own logic, the they're creating the justification for their own elimination. Right. You know, so this demonstrates that their own set of logic, their own methodology is faulty, to say the least. You know, if it leads to mutual self mutual self destruction, you know, mutual elimination, you know, that's all that that kind you of see, methodology leads but, to. But, but Abraham, if you, I mean, you you just said something mutual destruction. You know, back in the old, oh, not the not too far long ago, fifty years ago, even the Soviet Union, the United States, understood that once the war starts, it's over. Oh, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they call it mad, mutually assured yeah. destruction. Once yeah. it starts, it's over. Yeah. So we don't want to start. Yeah. The Israelis don't have that view. And that's the <laughs> danger of that view. Yeah, they don't yeah. care about the war because you don't know, I don't know what Hamas has in its in, in its last ditch treasure chest of of weapons. No, you don't. We don't have any idea. They, I mean, whatever. And neither do we know what Israel has. What we do, they they have they have nuclear weapons. Hmm. They have nuclear weapons. They have nuclear weapons. No doubt about it. I don't have to have evidence. I just have evidence by by this investigation. Hmm. So both sides in this conflict, because it's being fought by the Israeli side on a deep suspicion and animus toward Palestinians. See, that doesn't even allow for negotiations. No, it doesn't. That 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 doesn't allow for dialogue. Yeah. Not real dialogue. Mm. So, you know, that's why this situation will probably never come to a truce. And because it's just like the basis for the aggression denies those being aggressed the right to be considered equal. And it's, it's, in many ways, it's it's like... It's just another form of racism, except, except, except you have a state that's carrying yeah. out the race. That's it's the definition state. of racism right then and there. You know, racism is denying the right to exist. Yeah. And since since the Jewish, this since the Israeli Zionist state has this approach to, has this, this belief, this policy, this practice towards Palestinians, unfortunately, it, it, it prevents peace from occurring. And that's that's the danger. Look at what's happening now in, uh, in Gaza. That's the Zionist state, they don't want peace. You know, that's not why it exists. Peace. You know, that's not the purpose peace. of they the Zionist state. No. Yeah, no, the no, 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 no. Right. They don't want peace. Yeah. And that's why the situation now is so dire. That's why people are dying. That's why people don't have a hospital to go to. That's why there's no food. Because they don't want peace. They want destruction. Because yeah. Well, if you look at it, you know, the history of it, you know, like the Zionists, you know, Military forces have attacked repeatedly. Oh, always. 1947 always. to 1949. Always. 1956, always. they attacked the Suez Canal, you know, together with the France and Britain. 1967, they attacked Jordan and took over the West Bank and pieces of uh, Syria and Lebanon. Lebanon, they attacked, you know, up to the Litani River. Then they attacked again, right up into Beirut and massacred Sabr Shatila. Now they've attacked Gaza, Gaza. 
And, and you the, know, the thing, but they've the been forced to that. retreat, you know. When they have retreated, you know, like from the Sinai, they've been forced to do so because 1973, they nearly lost that war there. So in order to save the state, you know, they had to, you know, <laughs> concede, you know, the territory back to Egypt. Otherwise, they wouldn't have done so. Yeah. But but when you have a military, okay, I am not against tactically throwing the first blow. I'm not against that tactically. That might be the strategy I choose in, in a particular war. Well, that's what Hamas did. Yeah, <laughs> you know, this time, you know. Like... But but I'm saying that if you are, if that is the basis, if you have a racist chauvinist view as Israel toward the Palestinians and toward their existence as a people, and your view is always throw throw the first blow, then you pretty much are an aggressor. You you know you you don't believe there's any place for non aggressor behavior of of your society and that's mm -hmm. what makes you so dangerous mm -hmm. and unpredi and unpredictable there's mm -hmm. nothing that's what i've always said about the design of the state and i you, hope no one takes this the wrong way there's nothing that there's nothing that they won't do yeah yeah that's yeah. my view and not because i don't like them it's just nothing that they and the and the collective west behind them as their allies yeah unfortunately there's something they may not be wanting let, let, let's look at what's happening in Moscow right now. My view is the U.S. and Britain would rather not be connected officially to these to this event. Yeah, not not, not officially. That's that. That's a little. That's that's war. If if you're officially connected, it's time we have to go to war. That's it. We have to go to war. Mm -hmm. So they rather have a more than an arm's length connection. They may give a nod and a wink. Mm -hmm. um, they've already said that the guns that were used were imported from another country, which is always a sign that some they 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 they, they were not locally purchased. Mm -hmm. So they would prefer. To, I I, still, I, still, I I do think it's in the interest of destabilizing Russia that the U.S. and Britain would support would would support it, or if if they do about it, wouldn't wouldn't would block it. But if you always have the aggressor approach, dude. People are not going to give you a second. People are not going to give you a second chance mm -hmm. when they get the chance, like like just like Hamas, get the chance to just go into attack because they know what you do. They're not, mm -hmm. they're, they'll catch you, which catch you in, when when you're sitting on on the toilet or or perhaps, perhaps reading a book in, inside the park, or tripping on that on ecstasy at a at a rave festival. Yeah, well, yeah, well, I'm saying you know they'll oh, like... they will they will adopt your approach. Because of what you've done, that's where you have to be. A nation can't nations that are going to be peaceful or have good connections, or communities going to be peaceful or have good connections, can't be known as aggressors. Yeah, no, you can only live. You know, no, you can only live in a society, and only societies can live with each other only by mutual consent. Yes, 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 mutual consent. That's the best way to approach it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I'm just. I I don't know. Um, do, do you have any 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 rundown on this Security Council vote yesterday? What the U.S. is trying to pull? Because you know what the U.S. Yeah. called. Yeah, when, when yeah. The, is, is, yeah. Is, you know, the U.S. resolution referred to a ceasefire, and they claimed that it was a resolution for a ceasefire, but it wasn't. It was a resolution referring to a ceasefire, saying that it would be good to have a ceasefire. But it doesn't call for a ceasefire. It doesn't call for an oh. immediate ceasefire. See, you know, it, it's see, just sitting, you know, like cover, do. you know, to let Israel continue, you know, like with its sinus, you know, genocide there. Yeah. You see, there's never a treaty they haven't broken. Hmm. There's never a document they haven't said, oh, we didn't mean that. Here they go in again, trying hmm. to bring us some nonsense in the UN. Because I thought, well, I, I'm going to tell you what, really, me being, mis, you know, Mr. Mr. Naive at times. Well, maybe the U.S. has finally come to its senses and know that Biden has to win the election. So let's see what what the, I was trying to find it online. That really got bowed down. I said, "Oh, it must not have been any good anyway." Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, was, I hear you know, uh, uh, Blinken came out with some sort of you know statement critical of uh, of the of the Zionists. Blinken, I haven't heard it yet, you know, but uh, Blinken. Oh my God! Somebody needs to just somebody needs to give him a hug and then pinch his butt. What's wrong with you, fool? <laughs> Because <laughs> grandma needs to give him say, Anthony, what's wrong with you? Shake him one time. I'm sorry, grandma. I'm sorry. You know, you know, 
you know, what's, what's, you know, I need, you know, how you yelling and say, what's wrong with you? Oh, I'm sorry, you know. He's such a jerk. He's such, I mean, he's, I mean, he's such a, he's such a uh, manipulator and such a believer in, uh, in a uh, designer's cause. He's such a zombie. That's what he is. He's just a zombie. He looks like a zombie too. He kind of, he kind of does look like a zombie, doesn't he? Yeah. 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 I mean, what? I mean, it's kind of weird that you do. Everybody... You know, it's, it's, it's some sort of, you know, mental block that he has there, you know, that he can't see, you know, what he's seeing. Um, you know, uh, but uh, it's uh, it's all too much, you know. It's all so sad, you know. It's very, it's very saddening, you know. Maybe not de depressive, you know, but saddening. Profound, you know, sadness. Yeah. And the Palestinians yeah, I mean, are so desperate now, and they'd probably jump on the wharf that the uh, that the American military is building right yeah, now uh, with the yeah, debris uh, from the from the houses that was destroyed by the by the bombardments. You know, they're building this wharf way out into the Mediterranean. Have you seen the you wharf? Know. Have you seen the? the, the yeah, the, the, I saw some pictures of it. You know, and they're and and they've got you know like a, about five five hundred yards already. You know, built and. Wow. Uh, if there's going to be votes there bringing, you know, some aid in, uh, you know, you know, the Palestinians are going to jump out the boat, you know, when it's going to be leaving, you know, because they're going to want to leave, you know, that sort of thing. So, you know, maybe it's, you know, being set up for that purpose, you know, the gray zone people, you know, think that it's, that it's set up for that purpose, you know, to uh, siphon off the Palestinians out of, out of Gaza and concede yeah, the territory, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, to the occupation. Yeah. 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 Who, who is, who was doing the building? U.S. military? You know, that's what wasn't clear, you know, like all of a sudden, you know, all these bulldozers appeared, you know, out of nowhere, yeah, yeah. you know, like all this yeah, construction appeared that could, you, could have, you know, um, you know, lifted up, you know, the concrete slabs lying on top of people, you know, and in, in, the, in the homes that were blown apart, you know, that, and so, you know, and that equipment, you know, wasn't available at that time, you know, now the equipment is available and they're digging up all the debris together with the buried bodies of the Palestinians Okay. Dumping it into the Mediterranean I'll and creating, you know, sad. this this road of death. How sad! How sad! So deplorable. Yeah. So, but, but the baseball game, the baseball season must go on. The NBA All Stars have to be have to be held. Golden yeah. Glove and, and the and the Kevin Wars must be seen. Yeah. Sometimes, anybody, we have to just stop for a second. Yeah, you gotta stop for a second. What the hell is going on here? Yeah, stop the world, you know. That's what I wrote one time. Yes, yes, you know, stop like for everything has got to stop, you know. This is the most important yeah. thing. And together, you know, all, you know, these genocides, you know, and the civil wars, you know, that are going on at the, at, at the expense of the local population, not at the expense of the soldiers, you know. Some of them, you know, 10%, you know, will get killed, you know. And they're willing, you know, to go ahead with it, you know, because they're getting paid to kill. Okay, so... Meanwhile, in Sudan and Congo, you know, it's the civilians who are being, you know, killed in the crossfire. So because they happen to be, you know, like living in the wrong place or, you know, descended from, you know, the wrong parents or something like that, they ended up, you know, getting genocided. You know, three genocides happening at the same time now in the world. At the same what time. What is the world doing? It, you know, like the world should just stop and solve this, you know, before anything yeah, else, you know. Uh, Nothing uh, else matters uh, but this. Yeah, you yeah, know, this is the first thing, not the economy. Who cares about the economy? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 and the and the and the system we have of capitalism imperialism refuses. Yeah, those who are in it have to simply say we got to stop for a second. When you know, like, like you come home and you see this bill not being done or something's not right, you say, wait a minute, let's just stop and get this right. Stop. Mm -hmm. Don't take you looking, but yeah, this our world, the, the our world will not stop. The world we live in will not stop, or it does stop in some civilizations. But the civilization of the of, of, of the imperialist states, the collective West, it does not allow to stop because stopping means the profit profit will not be made. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah, you know, like something with you know, terribly, you know, like uh, <laughs> the death of money, you know, like is more important than death of of humanity. But, wow. but, but that's that's that, but that's exactly how it is. And that's yeah. why things don't stop. I'll just yeah. I, I have a colleague who lives in a country that I'm not gonna name. And last, I think a week, a week or two ago, on one day, the country stopped. Hmm. The, the airport was closed. Everything hmm. was closed. Nothing was open. It stopped for a day. I said, wow. Hmm. I can't even imagine. 
just it's not for a day. So you know, hey, whatever. Anyway. Hmm. Well, yeah. 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 Genocide. Together with, you know, capitalism, you know, killing the planet. Number two, you know, a second reason to stop everything. You got, you got Even a, the third world countries, you know, are selling off, you know, the oil, you know, to burn off, you know, the combustibles as fast as possible to make as much bucks as possible. And... I, think, I think the third world, I, I, I mean, not living in the third world country, it's hard to make a suggestion. But I want to just ask the third world, the people who live in, the, in within the third world who may be listening to this, how is development making your life better? Do you have, I mean, I'm talking about even under the system. Do you have a refrigerator full of food? Do you have three to five months of money in the bank? Do you have, do you have, are your children going to school and getting education that will make sure that they're able to survive and grow so they are better off than you are providing for them? Do you have a, you know, do you have a neighbor next door, a country that's trying to aggress on you? Or are you aggressing on, on your neighbor next door? If 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 the development, if the oil discoveries, the lithium, the mining of gold and um, all kind of pressure diamonds, buildings. diamonds, right, right. Diamond, <laughs> if that's not, not making the society hmm. wealth, then you need to stop. Yeah, yeah. it's that because the yeah. development isn't helping you. I think that I'm only twenty five percent of those societies actually have a decent life. Uh, everybody else is just struggling. They're still, they're, still, they're still struggling. You get all, yeah. all, all the resources are going, are going out of the country. Yeah. And the go kids on, who on. are digging, you know, with their hands, you know, for oh, cobalt, yeah, you know, to yeah, make yeah. A mobile Man. phones with here. Yeah. Those kids' lives are, oh, yeah. they're, 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 so, they're so close to death and death and uh, being handicapped for the rest of their lives. They're like, yeah. they're like, they're like this close to that. Yeah. Because the exposure to those minerals is deadly, they're in it up, they're up, they're in it up, up to their knees and chest sometimes digging out of it. It's nonsense, man. So stop. You have to stop and organize and fight back and take control of yeah. the land, take control of the environment. Whatever it means you have to do, you got to stop. If you don't stop, it's it isn't going to stop. Yeah. Not, Everybody should just stop and become an activist, a political activist. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, yeah, would do it. I mean, you know, and the world, if, if the world is, if the world is ours, that may be a choice that, that we have to yeah. make. That's what, uh, that's what uh, revolutionary mobilization, you know, means. Right. Revolutionary mobilization. It'd be better to do it in an organized fashion, you know, but uh, right. really, you know, right. we need more people, you know, to get involved. Right. And that's you, right. the listener here and now. I guess so we're going to be ending soon, you know, by by not by will but by uh, by limitation here but you know this is uh, enough for the moment you know yeah. i think that what we've been uh, saying here is not not to be heard you know anywhere else and that's why our work here is so necessary so thank you for uh, your participation steve and uh thank you for participating, thank you for participating we, yourself. we we continue that's what right. is it uh, uh, uh in spanish uh uh, cont, cont, oh no, in French, you know, in 1968, continuing the combat, second début. Wait, I, my accent is so terrible there. Continuing the combat, uh, sec, second début. Okay, let us continue the struggle. This is only the beginning, and actually, you, you know, like even though it's not the beginning, you know, like every every sort of you know, step is another beginning, you know, for something else, you know. So That's right. <laughs> it works. Yeah. Very good. Very good. <laughs>